Hey everyone, Brandon Taves here. I'm the product director here at Drumio and the co-author of the Best Beginner Drum Book. And today I am so excited to announce the release of my brand new book called The Drummer's Toolbox. Now this is the ultimate guide to learning how to play 101 different styles on the drums. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the book later on, but for right now I wanna dive straight into the lesson, which is on seven tools for playing any style of music on the drums. So it doesn't matter if you're a rock drummer, a jazz drummer, a gospel drummer, whatever style of music that you like to play, these are seven tools that you can apply to that style of music that you already play, or that you can apply to any new style of music that you wanna learn. So let's get started with the first tool, which is dynamics. So the first one is dynamics, and this is something that personally I think is one of the most underrated and overlooked aspects of music and drumming in general. And to play different styles of music on the drums, I think it's so important to understand how different dynamic levels actually relate to different styles of music. So two examples I really like to use are bossa nova and metal or hard rock. Now, if you know either of these styles, you know that there's a specific dynamic that's associated with each style. Bossa Nova is almost always a pretty low to medium dynamic level, and hard rock and metal in general is a pretty loud and aggressive style of music. So, if I was to play Bossa Nova like this, probably wouldn't last very long on the gig. So, understanding how dynamics are important in this style is, is crucial. So if I was to actually play bossa nova with an appropriate dynamic level for the style, it would sound something like this. If you do that, you're probably gonna keep the gig. So, the same thing also applies to a, a rock or a metal context. If I was going to play a, a metal gig or a metal performance and I showed up and played a groove like this, probably wouldn't cut it. What they would be expecting is something like this. Something with a bit more energy, a bit more volume, actually a lot more volume. So understanding how dynamics actually relates to the style of music that you're playing or that you want to play is very, very important. And the best tip I can give you for this is to actually go and listen to these styles of music. If you listen to bossa nova, you're gonna hear that it's at a lower dynamic level. If you listen to rock or metal music, you're gonna hear that it's at a higher dynamic level. Now let's move on to the second tip, which is feel. All styles of music can really be broken down into two categories, and that's music with a straight feel or music with a swung feel. Now, here's a few examples of styles that would be played with a straight feel. For example, surf rock and a train beat from country. Clearly both with a straight feel, straight 16th notes, straight 8th notes. So in comparison to that, there's also styles that use a swung feel. For example, like a blues shuffle, or like a style like go-go. So in those two examples, you can really hear how the music is swinging and using a triplet feel like this. 
compared to a straight feel like this. So keep that in mind when you're learning new styles. Really dissect them first and figure out, is this style swung or is this played straight? So those are the two categories that pretty much all music falls into. So it's really important to understand those. And there are a few styles that actually do use both swung and straight feels, like rock music, for example. You could be playing a straight rock groove, but in another song, you might need to play a swung rock groove. So just to show you how this actually works and give you the tools to use to actually turn something into a straight feel or a swung feel, let's take a basic eighth note rock groove and let's turn it into a swung feel. So you could hear the backbeats were still on two and four in both examples. The difference was with the eighth notes. The first one was straight, the second one was swung. You could hear that in the hi-hat part and in the bass drum part. So this is a really important concept to understand that will really set you up to play any style of music that you want to play. Now moving on to the third tool, we have subdivision. Now, this kind of pairs nicely with the previous one because I think it's super important to understand how subdivisions relate and are used in different grooves. So for example, if you're playing a basic rock groove, you should know that you're playing eighth notes on the hats and that's gonna dictate all the other things that you're playing and how those actually fit into what the hi-hat part is doing. Now, if you're playing in blues, you're probably gonna be playing in a triplet feel. So if you're playing a blues shuffle, you should understand that you're playing eighth note triplets on the hats, and that's gonna dictate how all of the rest of your drum parts actually sound. Now, for another example, if you're playing funk music, you're probably gonna be using some 16th notes. So take the funky drummer groove, for example. We have a 16th note pattern happening on the hi-hats. Now, all of this is so important because different subdivisions are used in different styles of music. And of course, there's other subdivisions, quarter notes, even up to quintuplets, quarter note triplets. There's tons of other subdivisions, but I think it's super important to understand eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth notes, and of course, quarter notes as well. And we talk all about that in the drummer's toolbox. But for now, let's move on to independence, which is the fourth tool I want to talk about. Now, most styles of drumming require at least three limb or even four limb independence. Now, as a beginner, this might take some time to develop, but for now, I just want to demo a few styles that actually require a certain amount of independence. So, for example, if you're playing a rock groove, now that groove I just played required three limb independence with the hi-hats, the bass drum, and the snare drum. And of course, a more complex rock groove could easily incorporate the left foot as well if we were playing on a cymbal. Now, for another example, if I was playing jazz, I could be using four limb independence. So right there in that example, I had the ride cymbal going, and I was playing some different patterns with the bass drum, the snare drum, and the hi-hat foot. Another example could be Afro-Cuban music. If I was playing a style like Nanigo, there's another example of four limb independence. Ride cymbal, cross stick and toms, 
my bass drum was playing, and I even had the hi-hat foot going. Now, these are just a few examples, but this kind of demonstrates the point that all drumming styles require independence. And this is something that you should definitely work on if you want to approach a new style of music or continue developing for the styles that you already play. Now let's move on to the fifth tool. So the fifth tool is tempo. Now this is something that is super, super important because most styles of music can be played at a pretty broad range of tempos, especially styles like rock, jazz, and Afro-Cuban music. So for example, if you've learned a basic rock groove at this tempo, you may get into a situation where the song requires you to play that at a way, way faster tempo like this. The same thing in jazz, for example. You may need to play that same pattern at a way, way faster tempo as well. So understanding that you should practice a particular groove at a variety of different tempos is super important. And whenever you get into a situation where you need to play that groove at a really quick tempo or a really slow tempo, you'll have all the tools you need to actually pull that off. So the sixth tool for playing any style on the drums is technique. Now, every style of music is going to require a different level of technique and maybe even a specific technique. So a few of them that, that I'd like to highlight here are molar technique. So if you're playing a 12-8 blues feel, for example. So instead of playing your hi-hat pattern just like this, you can use something like molar technique to make that a lot more efficient. Now another example of this would be finger technique or finger control. And this is a technique that's definitely a requirement for playing up-tempo swing. Now if I'm playing a ride cymbal pattern like this, There's no way I'm going to be able to pull all of those notes out with just using my wrist. It just doesn't work. So having the technique to actually use your fingers to play at those quicker tempos is really important. Another one of these would be heels down bass drum technique. Now if I was playing in a really quiet kind of trio jazz setting, I probably wouldn't want to play heels up into the beater and just bury it into the head. I want to play off of the head at a quieter volume, really allowing the drum to open up. That being said, if I was playing in a rock setting, I probably would want to bury in and, and give a bit more punch to the bass drum. Now those are just a few examples of techniques that will really help you play those specific styles of music. And of course, there's tons of other techniques as well. Slide and heel toe technique, there's double bass technique, push pull for the hands. All of those will help you out in different styles of music as well. Now let's move on to the last tool, which is orchestration. So the last tool is orchestration. And this is something that's really cool because 
when the more you dive into it, you'll realize that the same patterns are actually used across tons of different styles of music. And one of them I like to use, for example, is the basic rock groove. You'll hear this in rock, obviously. You'll hear this in country, gospel, even like heavy metal music. So I'm going to play this around and show you how this could actually be used in a bunch of different styles. Now you may be thinking, wow, I just played the same groove around the kit four different ways. And that's exactly what I did because that same groove, just like so many other ones, can be used in a rock setting, in a gospel setting, a country setting, or even a metal setting. I've played all of those styles with this groove. So that's something that's so cool about drumming and music. It's the fact that you can use one pattern like that and it can make its way into any style of music. And that's why orchestration is so important as a drummer. So there you have it. Those are seven tools for playing any style on the drums. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, my brand new drum book titled The Drummer's Toolbox is now available on Amazon and in the Drumio Drum Shop. And this book is gonna walk you through 101 different styles of drumming. Now, when I was learning lots of different styles on the drums, I always wished that I had one book that I could go to to find everything that I needed to know. When I was learning these, a lot of the time I found I was going to one book to find examples, I was going to another book for history, and I was going to other books and websites to find lists of recordings that I could listen to. And because of that, I wanted to create an all-in-one resource that would provide you with everything you needed to know about drumming styles. So in the drummer's toolbox, you're gonna to learn 101 different drumming styles. You're gonna learn about the history of each style. You're gonna learn how to break down grooves limb by limb. You're gonna see different configurations that work for different styles of drumming. And you're gonna find a thousand recommended recordings that you can go listen to to actually hear the drummers who play these styles best. Throughout the book, you're also gonna find links to an online resource area where you can access pre-built Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube playlists that pair with all of the recommended listening sections in the book. You're gonna find downloadable play-along tracks that you can use to practice these new styles too. And you're also gonna find Drumio Edge resources that pair with all of the content in the book. Now, when you're on this page, you'll also be able to get access to your free 30 days to Drumio Edge, where you can expand on any of the material that I talk about in the book. Now with all of that being said, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoy the drummer's toolbox. See you later.